Weekday afternoons from one on Talk Radio. It's absolutely amazing. We're just going to start talking uh, in just a moment to Jason uh, Hunter about uh, EU trade deals. And uh, then Kevin's going to lead us into Gibraltar. And I just thought I'd bring myself up to speed with what's going on in Gibraltar. You know, it's, it's all about Brexit trade. It's uh, what the Daily Mail has been banging on about, you know, sovereignty and taking back control for the last God knows how many hundred years. There's not one word about Gibraltar in today's Daily Mail. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Jason Hunter, former international trade negotiator, is joining us to, to really um, share his thoughts on Boris Johnson's rather unusual position because in the um, political agreement we appear to have signed up uh, alongside our European partners into having some kind of level playing field with regards to competition uh, but if you call our Prime Minister or, or indeed Dominic Raab over the weekend you'll get the impression uh, that we have done no such thing. What have we done? What haven't we done? Well maybe Jason can help. He's a former international trade negotiator. Good afternoon to you my friend. Hi, good afternoon, Matthew. Hi, Kevin. Um, so Hi. I, I noted that um, Ian Dunn, too, uh, I, I love following on, on politics.co.uk, he started it with, uh, you know, the first lies of the, uh, the post-Brexit age coming from number 10. Um, is that how you see it, Jason? Uh, categorically. I mean, October 2019, the political declaration was all put in place. Um, Boris Johnson said, this was the wonderful deal that Boris Johnson renegotiated, remember? Right. Um, and they were all saying how wonderful it is, how great it is. And in that political declaration, um, it specifically says that we'll be working on very, very similar level playing fields. In Section 77. Yeah. yeah. Right. And people, now they want to say they want to diverge during the, the negotiation. If you think about every other trade deal that's been negotiated in the history of the planet, the two different countries, they start, or two different trade blocks, they start in different places in terms of rules, regulations, and standards. Yep. And they find an, a mutual area <laughs> that they both find acceptable, which is a compromise between the two. We've already got that. And we will be the first country in the world to say, okay, we want this trade deal, but what we don't want to do is abide by the same rules and regulations in order to be able to act. Do we want this trade deal, Jason? Because that's, that's the, that key phrase you just come out with, we want this trade deal. Well, I would suggest, if you were to read between the lines of what Boris Johnson and Dominic Raab said at the weekend, those two men don't want us to have a trade deal with the EU. I think you've absolutely hit the nail on the head because Boris Johnson has specifically said, um, ideally we'd like a, a Canada deal, but if we can't get a Canada plus 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 deal, then we'll take the Australia style deal. Now, could you Bearing just could you, life, could, you, could you explain briefly um, the Canada deal? People have, have probably read a lot about relatively easy tariff free trading, but the argument I've heard that why Canada got it and we won't is that Canada is three thousand miles away from Europe. The further away you are, the harder, the, the less comp the less of a of a competitor you are perceived to be. It, that's exactly it. And yeah, Australia? Um, Australia don't actually have a trade deal with the European <laughs> Union. So, so Boris Johnson to say we, we can go for an Australia-style deal and that will be absolutely <laughs> fine for us, that doesn't exist. Now, well, it what what be, do they okay, have? It's okay, Matthew, we could just fall back onto WTO terms. Well, that's that, been saying for years now, the Brexit is. Now they know, even the, the former Director General of the WTO has said that's a really bad idea. Um, especially with what Trump's doing at the moment, trying to destroy the appellate process. Um, falling back into WTO rules is not as good as they said it was, so they're just renaming it now to saying Australia-style deal. Oh, now, I've caught... Uh, OK, I've ca caught your drift. Right, OK. So Australia, the Australian, the Australian deal is WTO rules. Uh, pretty much. I mean, they've right. got various um, what are called MRAs, which are um, mutual recognition agreements on certain things, like the EU have with the United States, that we've right. just given up. Uh, we talked about that the other day. Yeah. Um, we've just given up all of those, effectively. So Boris Johnson is heading for a hard cliff edge Brexit that we've been warning about all this time, Project Fear, yada, yada, yada. Um, and the Operation Yellowhammer report. Boris Johnson is saying that we'll put up borders because that's what the whole point of Brexit is, let's take back control of the borders. Yeah. Um, and we'll put tariffs on all the goods coming into the country. And the rest of us around the world are going, well, yes, Boris, that's exactly what falling back onto WTO tariffs actually could, means. Could it be that uh, you're missing a trick, I'm missing a trick, and that what Boris Johnson is doing is really, really clever? He knows that the European Union, and this is stuff I've read over the weekend, are, are cowards, uh, they, they won't stand behind the, their, their television. Right? <laughs> it was actually, Kevin. <laughs> How about that? And the Express, uh, and that they're cowards, uh, and that they'll run away, and all we have to do is stand up to them, and they'll give us what we want. 
Yeah, but I've heard that too. Um, if you think about what uh, Jacob rees has been saying for years and many, many others, is that as soon as we leave the European Union, we can drop all our import tariffs to zero and make everything cheaper for British consumers. However, now, now we've actually left, that promise of dropping all our import tariffs to zero and having cheaper food and cheaper shoes for our children, etc., that's all gone to pot because Boris is now threatening to put tariffs on everything we import to discourage other countries selling us stuff. And the only people that will end up paying for that are British consumers because everything we buy will become even more expensive. Mm. Now, the thing about WTO as well, or the Australia-type deal, um, is if you have no trade deals with anybody anywhere in the world, all of our customers in Japan and Mexico and South Korea and Canada, the United States under those MRAs, we've been able to sell product very, very cheaply to those other countries. Under WTO rules, those other countries, all of our customer countries around the world, they control their own import tariffs. So they will be taking control of the price that the British companies can sell to, to them around the world. They will also be able to tell us exactly how much of each particular export that we're making and shipping around the world. They'll tell us how much we're allowed to sell into each of their countries. Uh, so they'll set the price, they'll set the volume. This is not taking back control. This is giving control away to 164 other WTO member countries. It's the opposite of what was sold to the British public. Is, Talking about Kevin trouble, uh, Jason, oh, I think one of the flashpoints, uh, the big stumbling blocks, uh, looks like it's going to be Gibraltar. Uh, Britain is refusing not to include Gibraltar in all of its potential uh, trade deals with Europe. Spain insists Gibraltar must be excluded, uh, and we will not have that. So where do you think we're, ha we're <laughs> heading on well, the Gibraltar what, issue? Yeah, what's going to happen to Gibraltar? Are we between a rock and a hard place? Oh. Ha -ha. Uh -huh. I see what you did there, Kevin. <laughs> um, I, I actually went down to Gibraltar and spoke to the government down there, spoke to government officials, uh, spoke to some of the international legal trade experts that are down there to find find out what the effect of Brexit would be on them. And surprisingly, they said, well, to be fair, we're not terribly concerned in terms of um, the economy and all the big gaming companies that are down there. They've all got new licenses inside the European Union in Malta, is where most of them have chosen. Right. The big insurance companies have all got new licenses to be able to trade inside the EU out of Malta rather than Gibraltar. Oh, okay. So they will lose a fair chunk of uh, taxation income into the, the Gibraltar government. But one of the biggest issues they've got is Spain currently takes all their waste. Because it's a rock, they don't have any incinerators or rubbish dumps or waste dumps. So the black bin bag waste, before when Spain closed the border um, and they had trouble, the Gibraltar government came to Westminster and said, look, you've got to help us out. Go and talk to Madrid because we, we can't cope. We've got the rubbish stacking up, piling up, and it's stinking. It's, it's unlivable here. And Britain had to send ships around France, around Spain to Gibraltar to collect the rubbish and bring it back. I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah I do. God. So that may loom again then. Ta taking back bin bag, black bin liners. Yeah. yeah taking back, it's, it's a new, we forget taking back control, yeah. we've got taking back, taking back. Well, there, there, there is that. Then there's, then there's all the cost of doing that. And then you think, well, the only supermarket on the rock is the Morrison's. Um, that's yes. market. And even on a bank holiday weekend, if you've got the bank holiday Monday, they run out of fresh fruit and vegetables. If those trucks get held up as they go from Dover to Calais, because the European distribution centre for all the Morrison stores is in Oxfordshire, all the imports of all the different types of food go into there, get distributed, put onto lorries and shipped out to all the stores. That truck's then got to go down through Spain, through customs, through France rather, through Spain, to get to Gibraltar, if it gets held up there, the fresh fruit's going to be gone. But what about what about the feelings of the people that live there? I mean, you know, we, we've had an awful lot of people talking about democracy. You know, we had a vote, uh, and we know what side won, and then the European Union, the most evil, undemocratic organisation in the world with their pesky elections every five years. But we'll leave that to one side. The, the people of Gibraltar, should we hear what they have to say, whether they want to be in a UK trade deal, which I'm told they do, yeah. rather than being, you know, tied to Spain? They're solidly pro-British. But 98% of yeah. Gibraltar, don't forget, <laughs> voted to stay in the European yeah. Union. Yeah. Um, that's the will of the people of Gibraltar. The problem that they've got is the age-old treaty when the United Kingdom stole Gibraltar effectively from, from Spain. That original <laughs> treaty, where, where Spain backed down, says that if Gibraltar ever got independence from the United Kingdom, the ownership effectively of Gibraltar automatically transferred to the Spanish. So uh. the Gibraltarians, they can't even get independence from the UK without becoming Spanish instantly. 
and automatically. Oh, Jason Hunter, uh, for, for, for a cynical old fool like me, I, I can tell you this is comedy gold, yeah. the uh, Brexit transition agreement, after, so, after the yeah. tenseness, the tension rather, leading up to us leaving on Friday. These are the good times now, as, as, we, as we watch our political leaders yeah. take control. In the words of the song, there may be trouble ahead. <laughs> I think there may be. Jason Hunter, thanks very much uh, for sharing your expertise. Uh, you're listening to The Matthew Wright Show on Talk Radio in association with Switchcraft. Start saving now at switchcraft.co.uk.